Portland! Portland! Okay. I was born the year Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Our United States of America was in absolute turmoil the year I was born. All of us as Americans, different colors, races, body types, hair, we were at war with ourselves. And I learned in the midst of that chaos as a young boy that one of the traits of my spirit as a human being was healing. I'd like for you guys to consider tapping into a boundless, immeasurable resource. It's already inside of you, but the world has boxed it into a little religious box. And the truth is, there's so much more than that. I want to talk about your spirit, our spirit. You all have a spirit. It's not your personality. It's not even your actions. It's a much more secret place than that. It's like tucked down in the depths of your being, in the depths of your humanity. I like to think of it as your sacred serial number. <laughs> it's that thing that makes you absolutely unique and yet thoroughly somehow compatible with the people around you. We share it. Your spirit is there inside of you at conception, and it's at birth, and it's just like your genetics is a baked-in rule book for your unique features. Your spirit is a baked-in set of unique strengths that you have yet to tap into fully because you can never tap into it fully. And it presents challenges, ironically, that by design, since our birth, we are meant to overcome. So, so the spirit, it embeds into you gifts that you've yet to take full advantage of, and it will bring you a type of happiness that you've never experienced before. I'm suggesting that there's this powerful spirit within you, that you would be well served to become aware of. So many of us in our lives, and I know all of you can relate to this, we live our lives in fear. In a state of comfort or convenience, Alive to some extent, but not truly living. Do you guys know what I mean? But to learn about your spirit, your goal should be to challenge yourself. And then check this out. Push yourself to the brink so that your true spirit is revealed inside of you in a way that you never would have run into it unless you challenge yourself deeply. And what's more amazing about the spirit is that unlike us and our fleshy selves, our bodies, our spirits are unlimited. There's absolutely no obstacle that we can't overcome. That's good. And through our spirits, there's no plateau that we cannot reach. You know, guys, this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. The wounds of this world runs deep, very deep. But your spirit is not afraid of those wounds, and that's what's so cool about it. It's your friend to help you make sense of these deep wounds and help make sense of all of it. I'm going to give you a little history about where I come from. It's just part of my story, and please bear with me. 
I spent summers with my grandmama in Hennings, Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> my grandma Mardinia Churn. Now, she was a very poor black woman in the rural South. And in the early years, we used pails to fetch our water from a 30-foot deep well. And we walked to it every day. And it was awesome. It was just time between me and my grandma. And we basically used that same water all day long. We washed in it. I clearly remember standing up in the backyard, butt naked, in the backyard with this dirty water. And what's funny is my dirty water was the next kid's bathing water. I always tried to go first. <laughs> In this atmosphere, we did number one, and we did number two. All in an outhouse. Anybody know about outhouses anymore? We're sort of like the porta potties at concerts. Anybody know about porta potties? Well, outhouse was this old wooden structure standing on the top of a hole in the dirt. And I remember that's where we used to have to go to the bathroom. And I tell you, spiders would be up in the corners. Little snakes would get in there sometimes. And if you ever had an imagination, you'd imagine sitting there and a snake coming from... I don't want to talk about it. But let me tell you. There was no lights in there, so I always try to use it in the daytime. We didn't have plumbing and we had barely any electricity. We'd run a cord from the next house who had electricity. But we had nature, and in all of its glory, all of its glory, we had nature. And we make up things to do with nature. So we would put, I remember us putting empty milk jugs, plastic milk jugs, on a stick or on a tree branch. I don't know if anybody's ever done this. There might be an app for it now. <laughs> and you put a stick inside of the plastic jug, and then you, you burn the, the edge of that plastic jug until it starts to burn, get a nice little burn, and it starts to drip. And it drips to the ground. And if you've ever done this before, it, it literally sounds like missiles. It's like bzzoo, bzzoo, pew, pew. And we would make war on in innocent ant colonies <laughs> as little kids, and we find the ants, bzzoo, bzzoo, you know, it's amazing. It was wrong, but it was amazing. And we were knuckleheads. <laughs> and we were living, baby. And now grandma taught me how to pick collard greens. And we sit together, we wash those collard greens. We pick them and then wash those collard greens. We make homemade ice cream together. And we shoot rifles together. I know mama, grandmama knew how to shoot a rifle. And sometimes we shoot at snakes. And uh, she was an amazing shot, but she was even more just an amazing woman. And it was times that I'll never forget. But during those same times, her husband, my grandpa, he was a drunk. And I know that he meant well, but the truth is, his life never quite matched his spirit. So much so, that his purpose was diluted in his life. And I remember at his funeral, it was very interesting. My grandmother was the only one there crying at his funeral. And she was barely the only one there, period. I realized that situations like these often push me to the brink. They taught me lessons about the impact that we're supposed to have and that we're supposed to make on this world that we live in the importance of our families, the importance of playing the best hand with the cards that were dealt and making something out of nothing. Being in Tennessee, out in those fields, my spirit taught me that there is vast possibilities. And the fields away from the paved roads, yes, they are. But nonetheless, there's great things that are happening and that are possible in those fields. And not just taking the roads less traveled, but sometimes taking the fields not yet traveled at all and making great things out of them. Many years later, my beautiful grandma, Mardinia Churn, passed away. We got the call, and my whole family, my mom, my dad, my adopted brother, Bright, 
and my blood brother Terry, we all came from our various different places to Tennessee. And it was for grandma's funeral, and it was an amazing celebration. Amazing. And we left there with a new sense of purpose and direction. And we celebrated and had gratitude for the life that grandma lived. But I'll never forget as well, leaving there, my brother Terry also died the same week of an asthma attack. And it totally wrecked my brain. And the last place I saw both of them was in Tennessee. And I wrote this song. Lord, I've really been real stressed down and out. Losing ground, although I am black and proud. Problems got me pessimistic. Brothers and sisters keep messing up. Why does it have to be so damn tough? I don't know where I can go. Let these ghosts out of my skull. My grandma passed, my brother's gone. I never had once felt so alone. I know you're supposed to be my steering wheel, not just my spare tire. Oh, Lord, I ask you to be my guide and force the truth. Some strange reason it had to be. He guided me to Tennessee. Take me to another place. Take me to another land. Make me forget all that hurts me. Let me understand your plan. Take me to another place. Take me to another land. Make me forget all that hurts me. Let me understand your plan. Tennessee as kids, my friends and I, we'd walk on those rocky roads down to the corner store. And Mr. Johnson, an old bitter white man, owned that store, and we would buy penny candy from Mr. Johnson's store. It was actually penny candy, like really a penny. <laughs> I remember now and later. Does anybody remember now and later? <laughs> Chico sticks, freezer pops. For 25 cents, we had enough candy for the whole day. And Mr. Johnson was a southern type of racist. He brandished his shotgun on the back of the, the, back of the store and frequently called us nigger. Sometimes he threatened to literally shoot us. And I believed him. It wasn't playful. But it was, it was very interesting because he still was very kind to my grandma, Ardenia. And he treated her with the utmost respect. In fact, it was the type of racism I witnessed in Tennessee. And there was no laws, there was no political correctness about it. And to be honest, as a black young boy, I knew that there was hardly no protection for me. And yet somehow, and this is why I lean on this spirit thing, my spirit had me in my own heaven preparing me for future things. My spirit led me to write songs like Tennessee during the hardest time in my life. Now, in Milwaukee, where I lived most months out of the year, racism was a bit more absolute, more black, more white. At 10, my mom and dad got a divorce, and that was extremely hard. But also at age 10, one day I'm walking home from school, just age 10, and I'm approaching our home. This is an all, at this point, it's in an all-white suburb. And I'm approaching my home, and I see this problem with our picture window our living room picture window in the front of the house. I get closer and it's a broken picture window. And I get even closer and it's shattered. And then I get even closer and I look inside of the shattered window and all of our living room furniture had been taken from the living room and put on top of the roof of the house. On our screen door, the front screen door was a swastika. And I go around to the back, I'm 10 years old, my mom and dad's not there, they're at work. I go around to the backyard and all of our swing sets and all of our playthings for me and my brother Terry were smashed with like, as if with sledgehammers. And there was many other incidents like that that were just as bad as that and each one would shape my understanding of the roads of life that have been paved by many people and many of them with motives pure. But then there's some others 
that have paved roads with motives as impure as the heart can fathom. And yet my spirit was constantly drawn to the fields where I could defy the paths already taken and create new ones that were about healing. My life, my music, it would always explore these alternatives and celebrate the unseen, the unseen tomorrows, the possible heavens on earth that we can create. My spirit led me to spend time with people that were downcast, and I wrote a song. You want to hear it? Here it go. Yeah. Called Mr. Wendell. Hey, I, yeah. In fact, no, but man, you have to. Two dollars means a snack for me, but it means a big deal to you. Be strong, serve God only. Know that if you do, beautiful heaven awaits. That's the pro my road for the first time. I saw a man with no clothes, no money, no plate, Mr. Window. That's his name. No one ever knew his name, cause he's a no one. Never thought twice about spending on an old mom. Till I had the chance to really get to no one. Now that I know him to give him money is a charity, it gives me some knowledge. I buy him some shoes and the thing. Blacks spend all that money on big colleges. Still most of y'all come out confused. Go there, Mr. Wendell. Hey, 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 yeah. Hey, hey. Even science has been talking about how our brains can change when you consistently decide to change your actions. Believe it or not, as you continue to live, your brain continues to grow. It continues to change, and it will change and it will adapt. Habits that have been so hard for you to break. By pushing yourself daily, you can forever break those habits and put them behind you. Because your brain is able to make new pathways, each victorious day of pushing your boundaries, it makes it easier for you to do the same thing again tomorrow. And like muscle memory for athletes or for us as musicians, any one of you that are in horrible situations right now, you can visualize being out of that situation. You can disrupt the negative patterns that you're used to. And you can create new ones, new ways of thinking that ultimately creates a new you. Your spirit is waiting for you to take advantage of this. In my life, I've made money, I've made hits. But more importantly, I've made a special effort to pay attention to my spirit. In a world that tries to coerce all of us into roads with pimped out rides and spinning rims, baby. My spirit taught me that the purpose lies in the glorious fields, creating new narratives with vast possibilities and roads that have yet to be traveled. What about your spirit? Your spirit wants to inspire you to discover new strengths that you've been waiting patiently to get to. And more importantly, your spirit itself has been waiting patiently for you to get there. New pathways. And I hope to excite you to embrace your spirit because your story is so far from over. I challenge you, try something different in your life today. What's the furthest thing from what you're comfortable with? And commit yourself to doing just that. Breaking the things that bound you. Tap into a boundless, immeasurable resource. It's already here. It's your spirit. I was born the year Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. And if we fast forward to just the last 12 months, Cities like Ferguson, cities like Baltimore, they take on all new meaning, don't they? 
As if we traveled through a wormhole in space and time, our cities today erupt with screams saying, Black Lives Matter! And inevitably somebody says, All Lives Matter! Not knowing that the reason we scream Black Lives Matter is to make All Lives Matter a true statement. lives of Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, Eric Garner, and so many others. It challenges us. It challenges our very existence, doesn't it? It challenges our, our humanity. Because the roads of life have been paved by people, many motives, some as impure as the heart can fathom. But if your spirit is anything like mine, it runs to the fields where you can defy the paths already taken and create new ones that are about healing. If you're like me, you tell yourself self-defeating things every once in a while. But I've learned it's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. Your spirit says you are capable. You are equipped. You are meant to change pathways in your brain, but also in your life. You are a sacred serial number. And I challenge you to swipe that sacred serial number today and find out just how valuable your spirit actually is.